A company's inventory number reported in the balance sheet is a very important metric that you can keep track of that allows you to have an idea of the efficiency of a particular company to be able to sell its goods and services. In this video, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can calculate average inventory, which is a crucial metric that you can use to analyze stocks. And if you stay until the end, I'm going to share with you how it is that you can get this number automatically calculated for any particular public company that you like okay so as you can see here is the average inventory formula and the formula is super simple to calculate all you need is the beginning inventory of a particular company and then the ending inventory so you sum these two numbers and then you divide that result by two this basically means that you take the mean inventory of a company during a particular period now the reason why why this calculation is done is that it is a very important number for companies and that is because companies that have lower average inventories relative to their sales volume tend to be more efficient which means that their supply chain is more efficient and that also means they tend to be more profitable because the more inventory that you hold at any given period of time the more inventory cost that you're gonna have and so therefore if you're able to sell a lot and keep a low inventory that means that you're more efficient relative to the competition and therefore this should be taken into account where you're doing uh, certain types of analysis in a company like valuations company comparisons and whatnot so now what we're gonna do is we're going to calculate the average inventory for a familiar company and that is for Apple so I'm gonna walk you step by step through the calculation and most importantly at the end of that we're gonna do the calculation for a whole bunch of companies all at once so that way you can quickly identify which companies like I said before are the most efficient with their inventory so in order to do that we're gonna be using the white sheets add-on but you can get the financial data any way you like this works on Google Sheets and Excel we're going to get the data for Apple so in this case we just enter the ticker and then we select annual quarterly data in this case we're gonna go with annual data and then we're going to click on get data what this is going to do is it's going to generate the income statement the balance sheet the cash flow statement key metrics and financial growth metrics of the company on a historical basis so if i zoom in here just check this out so here you will see how the data goes back to 2004 so there's a whole bunch of data that you can analyze but in this case we're focused on the average inventory the inventory is found right here on the balance sheet and if I zoom in you will see it so the inventory falls under assets the assets category that is things that provide a financial benefit to the company and then it is also found on the current assets part of the balance sheet that means that the inventory should be able to be liquidated within a relatively short period of time in order to be considered on this category that being said let's go into the calculation so what we're gonna do is we're gonna insert a new column so that way we could put the number actually we're going to insert another one so we could do it right here in the middle we're going to bold the answer but we're going to apply the formula so as you can see it's very simple all we need to do is add this plus this divided by two and as you can see, the this is the ending inventory, and then we just add it to the beginning inventory, which was the previous year inventory, and then we divide that number by two. This is gonna give us the average inventory. So as you can see, this calculation is quite simple, and once you do it in this manner, you could just simply drag it across, so that way you could calculate it for multiple periods. Now, as you can see, it is a little bit tedious to do this calculation for every company you analyze, we're going to get into how it is that you can do this for multiple companies all at once but first i want to share with you something cool and that is the fact that the average inventory is one of the key metrics that we have available on y sheet so if i look it up you see that it's right here and based on how we calculate it if we look right here you will see how the answer is exactly the same so as you can see you can tell that the calculations are accurate and this is 
mechanically done for every company so that way you can access the data like this but most importantly what is most impressive is what I'm gonna show you now so in this case we have a whole bunch of different companies you can change it to whatever you want in this case I'm gonna get rid of some of these ones because they don't make any sense to have here and they're just basically repetitive so get rid of this get rid of this there you go so now we have this tech companies right here I'm gonna zoom in so that way you can see the data better the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to get rid of the name and get rid of all this information right here and we're going to start retrieving data so the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna get the average inventory first so we just need to enter that. And then rather than calculating this metric for every company, you can just use the wise function, which by the way, we have many tutorials on our channel, but you can see how it works here. So here's the wise function. Here's what you need. So symbol, we're gonna enter Apple, parameter that we're looking for. You can see a list of parameters if you click on available data, but basically anything that you can see in terms of the income statement, the balance sheet, cash flow, key metrics, financial growth, etc. The parameter in this case we're going to get data for the last available year of data so that depends company to company but this is a good way of doing it because for example if Microsoft hasn't released 22 results yet then you would get the previous which is 2021 so that way you're always comparing the latest with the latest so there you go now you have this set up and as you can see right away you're going to get the average inventory which is great and now what we could do is just simply drag this down and there you go just like this you're going to be able to get the average inventory for all these companies now some of them for example like Oracle and uh, Salesforce and all these different companies they're software companies so they don't have inventory and this is why you see this answer but you get the idea and you can always switch these companies to something else right like we could always just change this to Walmart and there you go the calculation will happen the main thing that I mentioned before is that the average inventory is very helpful when you compare it with the sales volume so if we do revenue we could use the same method in fact what I recommend that you do is that instead of getting this now we're going to change the function to get multiple parameters so the average inventory and the revenue there we go and now we're going to lock the cells in so that way you can drag the function across so here we go and there we go now we have the average inventory we have the revenue and this now allows us to see how efficient companies are with their inventory in this ways so we'll call this inventory ratio and what we're gonna do is we're going to take the average inventory divided by the revenue and this is going to give us a ratio that we can analyze and compare across companies so here we go now we can just simply do this and there you go now we can quickly identify which companies are the most efficient so Apple looks pretty good here Microsoft looks pretty good as well but obviously this depends industry to industry so that is why it is important to compare companies that are in the same type of market and industry otherwise the numbers don't really make a a lot of sense but assuming that this were companies in the same industry you could then go ahead and do one be like okay you know what apple looks really good so does microsoft so does ibm for example and then you can start to look into these companies to do more research and find whether or not they're good investments for you now you know how to calculate the average inventory why this metric matters and how you can use it to make good investment decisions if you've enjoyed this video make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification so that way you get notified every time we release a new video like this that's gonna allow you to take your investing game to the next level i'll see you in the next one